wanted to do a video on my delivery because I had delivered baby JJ on June 10th and I totally skipped the hospital bag video and I skipped other videos that I had planned for but that's okay I can always come back to it but I do want to share that I did have my delivery I am no longer pregnant <laughs> so um, I'm gonna just share my piece with you guys um, and it all started on June 8th and which is a Thursday and um, I usually do a night walk around the neighborhood with my husband and our dogs sometimes my brother tags along with his dog too but that night it was just us my husband and I and my two dogs and um, as we were walking around the neighborhood I, I just felt weird I felt tired I felt heavy and I started feeling cramping and so I, I walked slower than I already did and um, by the time we did it's, it's about a little more than a mile and um, once I got home I ate I tried to eat something and then just chill and watch TV and relax but the pain would like come and then it'd go and then so I was like okay I'm just gonna try and go sleep it off so I got ready went upstairs got ready did my bathroom stuff lied down and then a couple minutes later I couldn't I couldn't go to sleep because the pain just kept coming every couple minutes so um on June 8th, around 9 o'clock, that's when my cramping was consistent. And um, it was consistent to the point where I didn't sleep at all that night. Um, Eric was able, well obviously he was able to sleep because he wasn't in pain. But um, he slept and then like around 3 o'clock I had bleeding as I went to go urinate. So I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? Is it time to go to the hospital? So I called my nurse that was on call and told her I've been having cramping since 9 p.m. And now I'm having a little bit of bleeding while you urinate, which I do. She said to just monitor it if it continues bleeding to go ahead and come on in or even if the pain gets any worse. So I said, okay. So I didn't have any more bleeding. Um, the pain was the same it didn't feel like it had gotten worse or better so I decided to stay home so then the following morning it was still the same still feeling like this the period cramping like on my lower abdomen area and my husband was like let's go to the let's go to triage let's go to triage and I said no I didn't want to go to triage because Although I was having these cramps, I didn't think I was dilating enough to stay at the hospital to get admitted. So I was like, no, I don't want to yet. I just, you know, just let it play itself out, I guess. And um, I, I guess that, I guess he was like worried to the point where he was like, let's go. Like that he didn't have a choice. So it was at noon, I believe. Yeah, about noon. We went to triage and I was only three centimeters dilated. So they had me walk for two hours and I walked. I was in pain. I was crying. At times when the, um, the contractions were so strong, I, I would cry. I would always have to like close my eyes and just breathe it through because I was so done. Like from nine p.m. Thursday night all the way up into the Friday morning and then going to triage and then having to walk some more and I was just I couldn't I couldn't like do anything about it I, you know like I just I was so done with the pain and so after the two hours um, yeah, that's when I got checked. I was at three centimeters dilated and she was like, the nurse was saying, oh, I have to talk to the doctor, see what she says. She's the one to make the decision whether you're going to be admitted or not. And I said, okay. And I was like, please, please, please um, root for me. I'm, you know, I've been, I've been in pain for such a long time. 
So she goes, and then it took it took a couple minutes, a couple minutes. Um, the nurse didn't come back. The doctor did. So the doctor came back, or the doctor came in, and she was like, oh, "Okay, well." I'm gonna go ahead and admit you. You are three to four centimeters right now. And I'm admitting you because um, on my sheet for the contractions, um, she was saying that some type of wave or some type of, I don't know, the baby didn't like. So I don't know if the baby was, um, was distressed or I don't know, but she said, I'm gonna go ahead and admit you. We're gonna wait a couple minutes to an hour, I guess, um, to see if I have dilated even more if not then they're gonna go ahead and start the Pitocin so I said okay and then so I was super happy because I really really wanted to get admitted even though I wasn't even like six seven eight centimeters I had dilated I just I was just dead so at that time I got admitted around 4 45 p.m. so that's about four hours yeah, from the time I came into triage and when another nurse came in to bring me over to my room, I started bleeding more and more. I needed a pad because it was just bleeding more. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like it, it, this has to be the, it, it's gonna come, like he's gonna come. <laughs> and so I was brought into my room as room number four and I had like the best view of the city. Well of the parking lot and construction <laughs> but it was like a really nice room I felt comfortable and everything so they put the IV on and they couldn't I'm not really I don't really have a lot of veins that show and you can still kind of see I have bruising in this area um, they poked me on my hands as well and I don't know how I got this bruise wait how do I show this I don't know how I got this bruise but I just looked all bruised up but I got my IV over here and that's where they started the IV and Pitocin. Um, and then I got the epidural too. I got the epidural when I was three to four centimeters dilated because uh, I was just so done with the pain. But yeah, it was, everything went smooth. Like literally from, aside from me going through all this pain, but after the fact, going to the hospital, everything was just, you know, falling into place, where I need to be, what needs to happen, and everything. So I was happy about that. So, um, I got my epidural around 6.30, and I was feeling so good. <laughs> it basically saved my life. Like, I was pain-free, although you can feel the, the tenseness in your muscles, I was... I felt so good. I was able to sleep and take a nap, able to have a conversation. I take pictures. I felt good after having the epidural. Not saying that everyone should have one. I'm just saying that it was a lifesaver for me to have one. So I was so tired. Um, epidural and then seven. Wait, where am I? Around 7:45, they broke my water, so they use that 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 thing that looks like that stick when you crochet, and they put it in me. Pop, all that started draining, and yeah, they changed my bed like so many times, but that's good because you know you don't want any bacteria going up in there. They broke my water, and then they started pitocin at 10:10 because I wasn't progressing with my dilate my dilation so we started at 10 10 pitocin it was like very slow drops of pitocin they wanted to see how far i was gonna get so i was gonna get checked every two hours to see if i was progressing with my dilation um so since the pitocin they would check the thing and they saw that or the nurse saw that i was having um too many I was having contractions too fast to where they wanted to slow it down so they took me off the Pitocin and then I don't know if it was like another two hours where they checked me again and the doctor said I was progressing and to start the Pitocin again. So the another start of drip 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 um, and then a couple more hours get checked and then I was finally at seven to eight centimeters dilated at midnight. 12:30 a.m. So this was a very long, long night, guys. Long night. Um, 
And then shortly after that, I got checked. I don't know if it was another two hours, probably shorter than that. Um, but then I reached 10 centimeters and then it was time to start pushing. So I started pushing at 4.11 a.m. Can you believe that? 4.11 a.m. I was, that's a very long labor time. <laughs> so I was pushing, 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 and I almost pushed for about two and a half hours. Yes, two and a half hours I was pushing. Um, and then he finally came and and then yeah and then we had a baby so i the feeling of like him coming out was a hard work i, I was just like okay just keep a positive relaxed mind about this whole process but once he you know after crowning and then pushing more and then him popping out it was like and putting them and placing them on your chest it's like totally worth it you know but totally exhausting at the same time so i was very happy and like you do feel so many emotions like you're, you're exhausted you're you're happy but um i don't know it, it was it was like and then i was just holding on to eric because i was like i felt weak but at the same time like i'm talking to this new living thing which is our baby that just came you know like like there was so many things going on and then you have a doctor pushing on your uterus and it's like oh my gosh but totally worth it <laughs> okay so it was just a lot a very long day a long two almost three days and yeah it was it was exciting or it, it still is exciting although having the baby to come home and everything sleepless nights let me tell you but after that, after giving birth, the doctor pushes on your stomach and it, and it was painful for me and my um, placenta came out. She checked me. I didn't need any stitches. Thank God I did not need any stitches. I did not tear. I mean, I had little things, minor cuts here and there probably, um, but I, I was good. And, and that was like one thing I was really afraid of, which is tearing and stitches and then having to take a dump afterwards <laughs> so yeah so i was i was good with that and i was so happy and then you have to go pee they make you go pee after like let's say two to three hours or whatever once they take out your catheter for when you get the epidural you have to go pee within six hours and i couldn't do that so i had to get catheter catheter is catheter 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 lies catheter rised I can't even say it. I had to get a catheter again just to empty out my bladder. And then you have another six hours to try and go pee again. Otherwise, they have to catheterize you again. And you don't want that because you're not numb that, down there anymore. So I'm pretty sure that would be painful. Um, and then they brought me to my, my recovery room. I guess that's what it's called. And we stayed there until Sunday morning and we get and then we got discharged so staying in the recovery room a lot of nurses in and out in and out in and out you'll see a lactation representative she'll come in ask how everything's going because I do breastfeed um, a lot of nurses coming in to poke get some blood from me for the baby see how we're doing I got DJ circumcised so they took him away for let's say 30 minutes um, yeah so that experience told like I did not know what to expect I didn't even think about what happens when you're in your recovery room um, but a lot of a lot of things happen so I would recommend when you guys do go to the recovery room or have a baby or whatever it is you dress comfortably because you're gonna be there for quite some time you're gonna be so hungry too so you might want to bring some snacks you know so um, uh, dress, dress, just dress comfortably. So I wore like yoga pants and a shirt, but I wouldn't recommend wearing a shirt. I would recommend wearing nursing bra. This is only for those who are breastfeeding. A nursing bra or a nursing tank top with a robe. Like be as comfortable as that. I wore an actual shirt that doesn't button, that doesn't open up. I literally have to take it off. I did bring a uh, breastfeeding cover 
Um, but I mean, if there's easier ways than the way I did it. So yeah, what else? A lot of stuff, I don't know, a lot of stuff happened. Maybe you should look at my notes so I don't forget anything. Oh, they had this, um, a sit bath, a sit bath, what is where they have the Epsom salt. It is in their water system and you use hot or cold water. You kind of just sit there, you, you dip your stuff, you, you dip it, go up, dip it, go up, um, do it a couple times and it'll help with the inflammation um, and clean it out. So I did that, it was actually, it actually felt good. Cause yeah, down there it was super swollen, super uncomfortable, but having that warm Luke bath um, to help clean it out and with that inflammation, yeah, I would, I would totally do that again. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, bring the nipple cream, nipple cream if you're breastfeeding. I did not have any nipple cream, but I'm so glad that they supplied the Medela um, like their travel size tubes and I just applied that and bring nipple cream it's like a lifesaver because I ended up cracking and being sore because my nipples are just not used to it so nipple cream is a must to have um, you want to oh they give me pills too so I think it was like on, like on Saturday. They gave me vitamin C, a prenatal pill, a stool softener pill, uh, a calcium pill um, while I was there. So I continued using that once I started, once I got discharged to go home. I'm still using, I'm still con consuming the prenatal pill. I have a vi vitamin C, a vitamin D. I do have a stool softener because your first dump is going to be so uncomfortable you're gonna be so constipated you need a stool softener you just have to remind yourself to relax when you're doing all this stuff that your body's not used to so it happens <laughs> but gosh this was such a crazy experience it's everyone has their own different ways of explaining and what happened and you just have to experience for it for your own but i I hated the process where you had to push, but I love the experience overall, if that makes sense. So I think that's it. If you have any questions about how the epidural went or how the IV went or um, anything about just delivery in general, let me know. Just comment below. Other than that, I'm going to wrap it up. I'll see you guys next time. Please visit my other videos and have a good day. Bye.